hey guys and welcome back to another video so today what we'll do is we'll go ahead and taking a look at flashing this sky a son of rf bridge to um with tasmoto which will allow us to go ahead and go ahead and integrate our 443 devices and bridge that to a mqtt server and allow us to use all of our 443 devices and easily integrate that into home assistance now if you're wondering why i'm going to go ahead and flash tasmoto on it um i really am an advocate of using everything as local and keeping everything local and independent from the internet as possible as well as it opens up a lot more functionality than just using the basic software so i've never used this before i'll just go ahead open it up and flash those motors straight on i'm not going to use the app that comes with it or install the app i don't care for it we don't need another app on our phone we only need one app for controlling our home assist our home automation devices so with that said let's go ahead and take a look at these and see what we can do there we go so as you can see guys i have the son of bridge right here so i'm just going to go ahead and open it up i'm not going to go ahead and install any of the applications or anything that comes with it and we're going to go ahead and straight up just destroy the warranty so that's it it's a fairly small little unit um as you guys can see there's not a lot of stuff going on here it's basically just an esp that is in there as well so Let's go ahead and open this guy up and see if we can go ahead and flash those modes on it and we'll be able to go ahead and integrate that into Home Assistant. So in order to open these, I think we need to go ahead and remove these small things down here. And then we can just go ahead and pop off that lid and we'll have this unit listed right here so we're just going to go ahead and turn it over give it a tap there we go and that should be it now i did see someone else also go ahead and flash this so the easiest way would be just to go ahead and flip this open as you guys can see there's like a switch right below this and we need to go ahead and flip that to off to be able to go ahead and flash it so what we'll do is we'll just slowly open this up there we go and just bend those pins just to make sure that you don't damage those pins press a bit forward just like that so now we have that switch exposed and we're also going to have to use the pins right in there as well so you'll see that there is the, these pins and we'll need to go ahead and connect to those using a, a programmer um i have one give me a second one of these so uh, they come in various shapes and sizes but it's just a interface that allows you to uh, communicate with the chip directly so what they probably did was they just um, added the power to here and not any of the options to program it with via usb so you need to go ahead and just plug in your uh, programmer your usb programmer into the pins that is specified on here now usually it's just uh, your ground pin and your rx and tx pins that's necessary and the power and that'll go ahead and allow you to uh, upload your custom firmware to it so let's go ahead and quickly flip this switch so all we need to do is we can just go ahead and flip this switch and then we need to go ahead and the pins should be if you use the dupont mail connectors they should be good enough to go ahead and fit into those with a tight enough fit that will allow us to go ahead and program it so the way you connect it up is you'll see that there is a i'll put something up as well but there's a rx tx 3.3 uh, all these pins are specified on this board and it's specified on here as well so now what you would do is rx and tx connects to each other so you'll go from rx on your programmer to tx to your board and then from rx to your from rx on your board to tx on the programmer and that's just the way they send data back and forth and then obviously you need your power and your ground 
And you also need to make sure that it is set in programming mode. In some cases, you need to bridge the uh, D0 pin to ground. But with this one, we have a switch right here that does that for us. So let me go ahead and quickly plug that in. And then we can take a look. If it's going to focus, you'll see that it shows that there is small quite hard getting in there and showing it but as you can see it shows you text there now these pins correlate with um, 3.3 right there and from 3.3 it just goes down all the way to the last one right there now the last one we're not going to use we're just going to go ahead and plug those in up until the second last one um, and we'll just plug it in according to the same schematic on our programmer. The only thing that we're swapping around is the RX and the TX. Um, they uh, work opposite. So RX goes to TX, TX goes to RX. So let me go ahead and plug that in real quick and then we can take a look. And there we go guys so that is plugged in so as you can see i have my uh, ground wire going to the ground wire of the um, sun off board then i have the cts in my case um in your case it may be the 3.3 volt it's just going to 3.3 on the sun off board then my tx is going to the rx and my rx from here is going to the tx on the sun off and that's it so now all we need to do is we need to go back to the uh, computer itself um, hold this button in and then plug in the uh, usb port and we can go ahead and program it from our computer there we go guys so back up top here um what we'll do is we'll just go ahead and plug it in we're going to use a application called desmotizer um that is a really quick and easy way of setting up the firmware and uploading the new one so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go ahead and plug in the power while pressing uh, the power to the son of board while pressing in that button. Just remember that the uh, switch needs to be in the off position, and then you're pressing the button and you're holding it in, then you're plugging it in to give it power. And then we go ahead and plug it into our computer as well. And then you should hear it pop in. I'm just gonna go ahead and refresh and then select the COM port. Now to get the firmware, um, it is on here as well. Um, I'll give you guys a link down below, the same with the uh, uh, tool that I use to flash it. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and click on open here and I'm gonna go ahead and select the bin file. And then all you do is you just go ahead and hit desmotize and that'll go ahead and update that information and upload the new firmware desmota to the son of. So let's just go ahead and have that image right on there. Well, I'm still having the button pressed in. Guys, just make sure you're using a reliable power supply. I did try a power bank and I had some issues, so I just plugged in a normal power supply and that should solve the issue for us. There we go. So as that finishes up, guys, once that has been completed, it'll tell us that it was successful and we can go ahead and power cycle the device. I'm just going to go ahead and click on OK. And then we can go ahead and let go of the reset button that we kept in the whole time. We can unplug the power from it and then remove our USB programmer from there as well because we have successfully flashed the uh, device. And now we can go ahead and just flip that switch from off back to the original position and then go ahead and close that as gently as you can without snapping any of any of the wires then once that's back in position we can just go ahead and power it back up so we're going to go ahead and plug in the power and then we should be good to go so while we wait for that to come up um, it should go ahead and create a wi-fi network for us there we go, Tasmota, and we can go ahead and connect to that. 
and as you can see it's not really going to go to the correct place but what we'll do is once that's connected we can go to uh, by default the IP address is going to be 192.168.4.1 and that'll bring us up to this page so right in here um, we can go ahead and enter in our Wi-Fi SSID then our Wi-Fi password And remember, these are case sensitive, so just keep in mind that it needs to be exactly the same name as your Wi-Fi network, or it will not connect. Then enter in your password. Um, the rest I'm going to leave as is, and go ahead and hit the save button right there. That's going to go ahead and restart and save that information and then it'll go ahead and connect to our Wi-Fi network, meaning that we won't need to go ahead and connect to it. We'll be able to access it from anywhere on our network. There we go. So once that went ahead and restarted, it should have connected to your Wi-Fi network. Now you need to go ahead and figure out exactly what that IP address is that got assigned to your uh, RF bridge. In my case, I'm just going to go ahead and look at the newly connected device. It currently doesn't have a name. However, I can see the IP address right there. I'm just going to go ahead and copy that. And then I'm going to go ahead and paste and go and it should come up. So once we're on this page, um, the first thing we need to do is we need to go ahead and change the configuration right here. So if we go to configuration, we click on configure module. As you can see, it shows us a son of basic. We need to go ahead and update that to a son of bridge. So if we look down, there we go. I hit save and that's going to go ahead and restart real quick to update to the son of bridge configuration instead. And there we go. So that went ahead and configured it for our bridge. So you'll see it looks a bit different. This is just so you can go ahead and program. If you do have external buttons that work with 433, you can go ahead and program it in here. You have 16 slots available to you right at the moment. And then you can also go ahead and view these sensors. Now I have a couple of these that I'll be using for now. Um, it is just some contact sensors. Now, the reason you're using 443 is because it's very, very low powered and they run off of batteries where Wi-Fi is extremely high on battery usage. So using 443 is going to save you. You can sometimes run these for months on end without even thinking of replacing a battery. So that's what makes these very efficient in using. And they're also very cheap to buy. Um, so... The way we can see this is if we go to the console right now, you can see um, it already picked up uh, the sensor. So what happens is if I go ahead and uh, disconnect this, it sends two messages. So one for uh, when it's not connected. So if I pull this away, you'll see it's going to go ahead and throw in a message right there. That's for open. And then if I close it back up, it's going to send another message another code at least and that's the additional code for when it is closed and what we'll use is and i'll get to this again uh, a bit later on in the video as well um, we're going to go ahead and use the actual codes received right here so as you can see it gives us these code right next to the data and that's what we'll use so we have one for open and then one for close and that's what we'll use in our home assistant configuration but first we need to go ahead and connect to our mqtt server now you guys do know that we have set up mqtt server in the uh, add-ons uh, video that i have so you can go ahead and take a look at that if you're not sure how to set it up um so what we'll do in this one right here is we can go back to the main menu, click on the configuration right here, and then right here you see we have an option that says configure MQTT. So we can go ahead and click on that. It's going to ask us for the host name, so we can go ahead and type in the host name. And that should work. That's the easiest way of finding the IP address of your Raspberry Pi. Just use the host name in case it does change or your uh, router resets or maybe you replace, replace it. Then for the username, that's going to be your MQTT username. In here, we can go ahead and type in our MQTT username. I think mine is that. And then you can go ahead and type in your MQTT password. 
and that you can go ahead and find on your Home Assistant installation as well. So if I open up our Home Assistant and we go to our HasIO, click on our Skeeto Broker add-on, you'll see right here. If you go down, you'll have those passwords listed in here and I'll change this afterwards, so don't worry. Um, that's just for uh, now. So you need to have a username and password in here and that you'll go ahead and enter in here. Hit save. I'm not going to save it in here and that's going to go ahead and restart and connect to our MQTT server. And that'll allow us to go ahead and convert those messages that comes from Sonoff or from our Sonoff bridge. It's going to go ahead and convert that and send it into MQTT messages, which we'll be able to go ahead and pull into Home Assistant itself. And that's very cool. So let's go ahead and take a look at that real quick. And there we go. As you can see in the log, I had an issue with the name. It needed to be lowercase, but as soon as I updated the name, you can see right here, it says found and a new client connected. And that is from 10, uh, 133. So if we go and look at the console, you'll see that it does show that it has connected to the uh, MQTT server. So that's it. So now we're connected. So that's it for setting up the son of bridge. We have the device connected. Everything is set up. We don't need anything. We don't really need to do anything more in here for now. The next step is going to be within Home Assistant in the configuration YAML file itself. So let's quickly see if there is enough time. We'll go ahead and take a look at adding it in there um, or else I'm going to leave that over to next week.